Way back in 2013, I made a video about quality versus quantity on YouTube. That is, as a YouTube creator, should you make more videos or better quality videos? And my conclusion was that better quality videos really paid off, because despite the increased investment, time, effort, money that are required to make better videos, I thought that they were more than compensated for by the increase in views and subscribers and long-term revenue and growth of the channel. Now this kind of seemed to go against YouTube's advice, which was that you should be posting regularly and at least once a week. But there were examples of other channels on the site where they used a different strategy and it was pretty effective. Channels like Epic Rap Battles and CGP Grey, they posted maybe one video a month, but they got tons of views and they built huge subscriber bases, not to mention a library of great content that could be watched on the platform for years to come. That's the great long tail of YouTube. But I'm making this video now because I think that things have changed. And part of the reason I think that is because in 2016, my older videos started being viewed less and less. I mean, I'm talking about my greatest hits. They were going along at a steady state, getting roughly the same number of views every month. And then in 2016, they started to very steadily decline. Maybe the reason for that is because everyone's already seen those videos, and so there's no more potential audience for them. But I kind of doubt that, given the growing number of people who are coming to YouTube and watching ever more content on the site. And it's not just the performance of old videos that has me concerned, it's also how YouTube reacts to new videos. You know, in the past, it would be normal to get a majority of your views in the first week. But now, it's more like the first day. For example, have a look at the real-time stats for my video, The American Kilogram. You can see that in the US, on the day of launch, people really seem to be enjoying the video. It got tons of likes and not very many dislikes, and the views only really seem to drop off as people are going to bed. But then the next day, almost no one is watching this video. Why is that? Is it because everyone who would have wanted to see it saw it on launch day? Or did it get buried under the flood of new content YouTube's getting every day? Or did people not watch it because they didn't know it existed? Because YouTube didn't show it to them? I mean, there's no way to answer that question definitively because YouTube doesn't give data on impressions or click-through rate. But I tried to dig into this and, and figure out what was the issue. Why did it seem like YouTube was preferring recent videos, videos uploaded today, as opposed to even yesterday? And the answer I found is, well, not that YouTube necessarily has a bias now towards recency, but that it used to have a bias towards older videos. And if you think about this for a minute, it kind of makes sense. I mean, next to thumbnails, they put the number of views that video has received. And you're more likely to click on a video with more views. And all else being equal, a video with more views is likely to be an older video because it's had more time to accrue those views. And so in some situations, YouTube stopped putting the number of views and instead wrote recommended for you. Plus they added that little new box just for good measure. And there were other ways that YouTube was biased towards older videos. The algorithm used to update roughly once a day, meaning that if you uploaded a video today, it might only get into featured or suggested tomorrow. And think about the implications of this. If you're posting a very newsworthy, very time-sensitive video, well then, a lot of people aren't gonna see it today, and by the time they do see it, it's yesterday's news, and so maybe few people are gonna click on it. In contrast, educational videos about the world's roundest object or the most amazing thing about trees, they are just as relevant today as they are, you know, two weeks from now or a month from now. So I think it's a pretty good bet that this bias towards older videos helped educational and other high-quality evergreen content, and it would have hurt newsy, time-sensitive videos. YouTube has made some other changes too. I mean, they're making changes all the time, but some of the biggest ones, uh, number one, they decreased the importance of subscribers. And this is kind of justified because otherwise the site was getting cluttered up with not so great videos from channels that just happened to have large followings. Number two, when YouTube tries to decide whether or not to show someone a video, they consider whether that person has watched a video from that creator in their last 1,000 views. So if that creator is not making a lot of content or that person is watching thousands of videos, well, it's gonna disadvantage that creator. And number three, perhaps the most significant of all, the thing that the YouTube algorithm is ultimately optimizing for 
is watch time. They want all the viewers to get stuck into a black hole and end up spending hours and hours on this platform. And that, of course, makes a lot of sense. But when you think about how it influences different creators and different types of content, I mean, if someone really likes watching your content but they don't necessarily want to spend hours on YouTube, if they come and watch your video and click away, that kind of makes your video seem worse. And educational content that might inspire people to go out and search for things or do experiments, that also will hurt your overall watch time. So I think the way YouTube is going, it is preferencing certain types of content and it's preferencing certain types of audiences. And that turns the platform into something different than it was. Some people assert that YouTube wants to be TV, that it's really trying to be TV. But I don't think that that's it. I think they recognize that their strategic advantage is the fact that they're not TV. They don't have to fund a limited number of shows. They don't have to decide what gets made and what doesn't get made. Their advantage is that they're freely provided with almost an infinite supply of content. And then some stuff that no TV exec in their right mind would ever have touched just turns out to be wildly popular on the platform. That is a systemic advantage that no other platform can touch. And in this way, YouTube is the most free, open, and democratic video distribution platform that has ever existed. But it all depends on the algorithm. The algorithm is the linchpin, the Achilles heel of this whole project. Because there are 65 years of content being uploaded to YouTube every day. So obviously you need the algorithm to sort through all of it and help people figure out what they want to watch. If it surfaces effectively the content that people actually want to watch, well then the whole platform will benefit and grow and prosper as a result. But if it doesn't, if it instead surfaces things that, I don't know, are quirks of the algorithm, then YouTube has no strategic advantage and other platforms will come to dominate. Now I wanna present two different visions for the role the YouTube algorithm plays in this whole system. And there are three main entities, the audience, the content, and the algorithm. I think normally we think of the algorithm as kind of an impartial third party that's just trying to match the audience and the content together. But I think there are different ways to look at it than that. The first way I'll call the algorithm is the audience. To understand that, you gotta perform this thought experiment where you imagine that every person has perfect knowledge of all of the videos on YouTube. So perfect it it's basically like they've watched them all and they have ranked their favorites. Now if the algorithm is the audience, that means the videos YouTube is recommending for you are those favorites that you would have selected if you had perfect knowledge, if you had watched all the videos on YouTube and said that these are the ones you want to watch. In this view, the algorithm is basically invisible because it provides exactly what the audience wants to watch. The algorithm is the audience. The second vision is that the algorithm is the content. Now, on the face of it, this doesn't seem to make much sense at all because you know, YouTube plays no role in almost all of the content uploaded to the site. But consider for a second that creators respond to incentives, incentives of attention and revenue, and they see what is popular on the site and they react accordingly. So fundamentally, what gets made and uploaded to YouTube depends on how the site treats content. Here's another thought experiment. Imagine that for whatever reason, the algorithm only promoted car videos. So that was all you saw on the homepage and in trending. Well, over a period of time, the only videos that got uploaded to YouTube would be car videos. The algorithm is the content. This is obviously a ridiculous example, but there's less obvious ways that the algorithm could be biased, that it could be shaping both what people want to watch or think they want to watch and what people are making. For example, a certain algorithm could promote stuff that is only relevant today. So it's more newsy, it's more about fads, it's flash in the pan stuff that no one will want to look at in a few weeks or months. Now I saw the way the algorithm was working and so for the last 11 weeks I've uploaded a video to my channel every week, which is at a greater frequency than I've done since 2012. And if you look at the metrics of how my channel's performing, it has never been better. More uh, watch time and revenue and sub growth, they're all at or near their all time highs. But here's the thing, 
Some of the videos I made during that period weren't really my best work, and yet it's successful on this platform, and for me, that's a little bit troubling. I got into doing this because I wanted to make quality videos, but now I think the algorithm is actively driving quality videos away from the site. I mean, you can look at the view numbers on things like Epic Rap Battles or Devon Supertramp, and you see that they're dropping everywhere. This is the site where, you know, quality used to mean something, where channels like Vsauce and Minute Physics and Smarter Every Day could grow. And now I feel like that growth is much harder because of the changes that have been made. When it comes down to the question of, is the algorithm the audience? Is it perfectly matching their preferences? Or is the algorithm the content? Has it completely shaped what people are uploading to this site? I think the truth is naturally somewhere in the middle. But still, I think it's interesting to think about what you would expect to see in terms of content if the algorithm were playing an outsized role in terms of what's successful and not, and what creators are now making. I mean, think about this in light of the recent changes to the algorithm. Well, as a creator, you can no longer rely on your subscribers for views, so it's probably a good idea to make clickbaity thumbnails and titles. And since your reach is partly determined by whether or not your audience has watched one of your videos in the past month, well, it's probably really important to upload more regularly. So you should make two good videos rather than one great one. And since the algorithm updates more frequently, it's probably a good idea to make a timely video about the big issue in the news, the juiciest YouTube drama, or the latest craze. This will also help with trail watch time, because there will be plenty of other new videos that are super popular to watch beside your video. So I think the bias towards older videos was accidentally a bias towards quality. And the bias towards newer videos is a bias towards newsy, cheap, and disposable content. In short, quantity. It's a chicken and egg problem. Did you want to see a bajillion videos about fidget spinners? Or did you see a bajillion videos about fidget spinners and then want to see more? <laughs> Who is that? I don't... <laughs> but apparently, I mean, if the algorithm is to be believed, that is the way people are behaving.